Good afternoon, Benjamin Hatfield. Teach me to dive, doing another dive computer showdown. The first one was so popular, we decided to do it again. Today, we're gonna to be comparing the Apex DSX against the Shearwater Perdix, the iWatch Ultra 2, the Garmin Mark IIi, and finally, the Sunto Encore Black. Now again, Benjamin Hatfield, teach me to dive. I'm a technical dive instructor in Idaho, and today we're diving at 5,000 foot elevation at 43 degree water temperature, brrr, in our K2 side mount. So definitely a fun, fun dive. Now most of these we put at a gradient factor of 50, 85, but the Apex and the Sunto, we had to leave those at 55, 90, so they'd all go into deco and come out of deco at about the same time. What you find is, the three middle ones there, the uh, Shearwater, the iWatch, and the Garmin are all run pretty similar overall, but the iWatch is definitely a lot more aggressive. To get the Apex and the Sunto a little bit more aggressive, we had to move that up to a 5590 gradient factor. Now these are all great computers and everybody definitely loves them. They, we have them all running on the Bullman Mac Daddy ZHL 16C auger. And there he is, the Mac Daddy <laughs> Albert Bullman himself. Now they all retail pretty close. The Apex is definitely on the high end as well as the Garmin, but the Garmin does a so freaking much. This particular Garmin, I've had for like freaking three and a half years. It's just done an amazing job. Actually run marathons in it. Now. If I had to choose two of these computers for side mount, that would definitely be the Apex DSX or the Shearwater Perdix 1 or Perdix 2. They are really purpose-built computers designed for any kind of tech features that you're gonna wanna do. They've got all those cool features that you like, that you need, that you want, for especially for side mount. Now, if I had to expand that out to do back mount twin sets with multiple gases, now, any one of these actual purpose-built computers would do a fantastic job. That Sunto Black over in the end, it's got a really nice big screen. It's a heavy duty. It's one of those ones, you don't want your wife to get a hold of that when she's mad, because if she whacks you in the head with that thing, you are done, dude. So, they are just great, great computers. The Apex, fantastic purpose-built computer, bright LCD. And we all know about the Shearwater. It's just been around forever. It's the first caveman computer that they ever used to dive tech, I'm sure. Um, does a fantastic job. It is set up really great as a teaching computer is how I've got mine set up right now. You might take a look at it. I've got my temperature on there. I've got my GF99, my Surface GF, um, App Plus 5, Delta Plus 5, and I also like it that it is the only computer out of this whole batch that does a gas density. You can see we're at 77 feet right here. The gas density is four grams per liter. That is actually important. Now, if you don't understand what that means, you need to take a tech class. Please, please, please do not substitute this as tech knowledge because this is not tech knowledge. So as we kind of go through this, it's definitely important that you know how much gas you're breathing. Now, as we kind of move our way through this, I was really, really impressed. The iWatch did a fantastic job, but here's my suggestion. If you are a serious diver, and you're gonna do more than 10 to 20 dives a year on this thing, just don't. You're not doing yourself a favor. You're gonna kill this poor little thing. It's designed to go out. It's for that diver that likes to do five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 dives a year, and that's it, because they, they wanna look cool at Starbucks. Um, and uh, make show, hey look, I've got an iWatch, man, and I'm just cool, like, no, no. It's, it's that, it, that's the kind of computer it is. But it was bright. It also was pretty impressive that it allowed me to get a deco. It didn't just shut down. Um, and it helped me get back out of deco as well, if you watched it, which was very impressive. But here's the suggestion. It is a very, very, very aggressive computer. It is not designed to do deco. So here's my suggestion. Don't, don't do deco. It's not your friend in deco. Um, it did a really nice job. It was bright, it was easy to wear. It was kind of cool that I was able to go through the process. Now, as you can see, I'm tapping through on that Garmin. That is one of the coolest features of all these computers is the way you change on the Garmin is you do the double tap. It doesn't have a touch screen. You tap, 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 and it changes over to everything else. Now, one of the other things I really like about the Garmin, I really like about the Apex, and I really like about the Shearwater is the navigation modes. They have a very simple, easy to use navigation mode that you're able to get into navigation. You can set some reciprocal courses on it, 
do a really fantastic job of that. And right now I'm just using the uh, Garmin right there as a navigation computer. Now, as we kind of look through this, we're, you can kind of see that the uh, NDL is kind of running out on us. The Apple Watch tells us five up. It says, whoop, hey, dude, you're getting ready to go into in, in NDL. And you have to push a button to clear that out. Um, the uh, Apex, you can see we're four minutes to deco. The uh, Shearwater, we don't know, um, but I would imagine it's pretty close to that as well because you can see we're doing that really cool navigation of the single button right push on the bottom. Um, overall, the first one to go to deco, no surprise for me, the Sunto. It, it took me to a ceiling of 10 feet for three minutes. Um, we still have two more minutes on the Garmin, two more minutes on the iWatch, uh, probably two or three more minutes on the Shearwater, two minutes left on the Apex. Really nice and clear. I like that it comes up red. That color screen is definitely, um, I, being not colorblind, I, I like the color. So the, the uh, uh, Shearwater is the next one to go into Deco, and then finally the Shearwater, uh, or the uh, Garmin went into Deco right after that. I like the, how the Garmin does this. I don't know if you can see this or not, but as you look at the Garmin, it gives you your Deco ceiling and time in seconds. So it's really, really ultra accurate. Now, as you take a look at this, we can see the Sunto 10 minutes or 10 feet for five minutes. What is going on with the iWatch? We're at 106 feet, it says 10 minutes for one minute. Now, what that's telling you is that it's running a very, very high and very aggressive graded factor off gassing profile. It wants to get you the heck up out of the water. You're into deco because you're dumb and you shouldn't have been there to start with. And it wants to get you at the fastest gradient off gassing profile so that you're able to get out of deco and and uh, be safe. Now, as you take a look through this process, I mean, the sheer water, 20 feet for three minutes. The apex, 20 minutes for two, or 20 feet for two minutes. And look at that freaking Sunto over there, 10 feet for five minutes. It's, it's definitely not happy that we are in deco. In fact, it's pretty displeased about that. But it is kind of nice. It's got a nice ascent meter on the left-hand side over there, and it's got all the basic information that you want to on that as well. Um, I like the uh, the uh, Garmin over here. It also gives not only gives you dive time, but it also gives you actual time of day. So you're able to take a look and see where I'm actually at in time of day as well. It's got the OT units up there as well as uh, my CNS is at 4% as well. So I'm curious if you're wondering what some of that stuff is. That's what it is. And uh, it's just really handy to have a tremendous amount of information. You can sim certainly simplify it down. You can take it to big numbers. I haven't done that. You know, uh, um, things look bigger underwater like every guy loves um, because and they look four times bigger. So I've never had a problem seeing any of my computers and those small displays underwater. Uh, it's just been a really nice, easy thing for me to do. But as we start heading up, the, we can start seeing that uh, on the uh, Shearwater, we've got a graded factor. We're off gassing at a point of 1%. It's just almost not enough that on the apex, it's, there it is, it finally popped up. It says, hey, wait a minute, you're off gassing, dude. And it gave us kind of in that 1%, 2% area as well. So that's one of the really great things that you can use on the Shearwater and the apex is they have the gradient factor current off gassing schedule. And you can see as we as we rise in the water column, we're at 41 feet. Well, good old Shearwater says at 40 feet, we're at 13%. And, and the Apex is showing a very similar to that as well. Now, as we look at the iWatch, it has no additional information. It's just trying to say, hey, dude, you're 34 feet. You went too deep. You stayed too long. You shouldn't have done that. Get up to 10 feet. Stay there for 10 minutes. Get the hell out of the water. Um, and that's really what it's all is trying to tell you. But it's as a simple recreational computer, I was very happy that it did that. I mean, its whole goal is how do I make my diver safe? How do I protect you? So kind of a cool thing, uh, you know, certainly now, I, again, it is not designed to be a purpose-built dive computer. So it's, it's designed for that uh, weekend warrior or actually every six month warrior that wants to go out and do four, five, six dives and then go out and have some pina coladas on the beach with their girlfriend. That's uh, a, definitely a good way to go. As we kind of watch through this process, we can definitely see the gradient factor on our apex, that green line on the right-hand side. Um, we can also look at the shear water. We're at 14% and they pretty much coincide. They're telling you, you are off-gassing. 
you're off gassing at a safe rate. So it depends on what you like. I, I like the more manual mode of the GF99 on the Shearwater. And it tells me, I and I know that when I start hitting that 25%, that I am way too high, it's starting to slow down because I want a, a more accurate growing profile. But the Apex did it just a little different. They, they gave you that kind of green, yellow, red. We all understand that. As we look at the left-hand side, we can see our ascent meter on the Apex. It's giving us that green, yellow, red. There's a couple times I've gone a little fast and it's gotten up to that yellow and said, slow down, slow down. So and it definitely nice. It's got a nice visual display on that. Now you can see the uh, Apple Watch has cleared deco and we're just kicking along and every time we hit up to right at the 20 foot mark, it wants to kick into a safety stop. Um, you can also see that the uh, Apex has kicked over to its safety stop as well. Um, it's we got 20 feet for one minute and 43 seconds there. So that's kind of nice as well as if you notice the Shearwater kick or the uh, the Garmin kicked over to uh, uh, safety stop as well. So it's telling us we got a minute left in our safety stop as well. So it was really tricky with the uh, the iWatch. It is very specific. You had to be at that 19, 20 foot mark for it to be able to count on safety stop as well. Um, it just was very specific. If you if I went below 20 feet, it definitely kicked that back off and paused the safety stop. Now finally, you can see the uh, sheer water. It doesn't care. It, it just uh, about your safety stop, but it gives you a cleared timer. So you get to make that manual decision. So I guess the difference between, for me at least, the Apex and the Shearwater is the Apex tries to make things a little bit more user-friendly, a little cleaner, a little a little prettier, if you will, and a lot less um, where I have to think. Um, I've, I've got a graph for my GF99 that I can say, okay, wait a minute, I'm going at this speed, green is good, yellow, I slow down, red, I'm I'm being a, a, a dummy. Whereas the Shearwater, it says, here's your percentage, do with it as you will. So finally, uh, the Sunto finally cleared out a deco, you can see it over there, and now it's finally uh, at that point, it's back into regular mode. So I went ahead and switched this over and I've cut my my hands out so you can kind of see what's happening. This, that's me and my big blue pink light um, over there. So you click on it once, you can see over there uh, what my maximum depth was, 110 feet, what my CF is, what my gradient factor is currently right now at depth. Um, there's my tissue compartments on the Apex as well, which is kind of nice. Um, you can go through it and get an idea what my tissue compartments, and as we all know from Mark Powell, that our mid mid uh, tissue compartments are the most concerning as well of all the tissue compartments we have. And yes, I'm back to navigation on the Shearwater. There's our gas. Um, there's current uh, temperature and my gradient factor, as well as my CNS factor as well. Um, and you go keep going through that. I'm at service gradient, and here's my tissue compartment side by side against the apex. And this is kind of neat. We they they're just showing it in a different way. It's how you like to see it, right? So, if I were to choose a tech computer uh, for side mount, again, it's going to be the apex or the Shearwater. Seven days a week, twice on Sunday. I wouldn't even think twice to be honest with that. Um, if I was going to choose a tech computer for twin sets. It could be any one of the four actual purpose-built computers. They are all solid, solid, solid computers. The Apex um, does a great job. Bright screen. Again, that uh, Sunto Black. Man, that thing is a heavy beast that you will kill somebody if you throw that at them. Just don't do that. But it's nice. It's got a bright screen. Simple to use. Crazy simple to use. Uh, the only thing I, I wasn't excited about it is it's got manual altitude correction. So I have to go in and tell it what the altitude is, which I think it, for me, it should kind of figure that out on its own. I mean, it's it's a pressure gauge, really, right? Seriously? Whereas the other four of these computers, the uh, Garmin obviously knows within a half a foot of how, what your current altitude is. So does the, uh, um, the iWatch. And we got our friendly neighborhood Crawdad came in. He is picked for the day. Is going to be the Shearwater, of course. But do we really want to trust the Daddy Crawdad for our choice of which computer we want to use? Again, double tap on that garment is sweet, dude. Man, I can't tell you how many times I've used that. And and you can customize all the screens how you want. That's if you had a pod hooked up to it. Really nice. Back to the home screen. You can see that at this point in the dive, I've got like 46 minutes into it. I'm at 12 feet. Kick back over, here's another custom screen that I've created. 
Um, very nice. Other cool thing, if you're in warm water and you can let that thing touch your skin, it'll monitor your heart rate throughout. Another cool thing as well, you can also get the, the cool triathlete uh, chest band. So if you are wearing a dry suit, you can put the chest band on. It'll Bluetooth. Well, it's not actually Bluetooth. It's A&T um, uh, that it'll... Uh, kick in and it'll read your heart rate during your dive, which is kind of a cool feature. I don't know how exactly I would use that data for safer diving, but it would definitely be interesting, especially when I start getting into those high uh, gradients where I'm in the, the point of either super deep at a high gas density or um, something happened. It'd be interesting to see what happens to my heart rate and, and kind of go back and monitor my mental calculations on that dive, because obviously I'm not taking notes on that process. Um, but again, Benjamin Hatfield, Teach Me to Dive. If you like this content, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Share it with all your friends, including your mom, your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle and cousin, um, and even the people you don't really like. Share it with them too. We, we want everybody to be safe. The goal of our channel, obviously, safety. We want to show you what it looks like. And again, note to all those out there who thinks this just became a decompression class. No. This is not a decompression class. This is just showing you what happens when you take five computers and, you, and apparently you have more money than, uh, than brains and you put them all on a stick and you decide to take them to 110 feet. That's exactly what I did here. Now, in uh, my defense, I didn't buy the Apple Watch. I, that was uh, somebody else was dumb enough to lend me their Apple Watch Ultra. The other four computers, this is not a paid endorsement. Uh, I own all these. These are computers that I per currently dive in different situations for different reasons. This is me coming up to the surface um, and bringing them out. So you have the idea what they look like at the surface as well. Yes, this is a homemade ri rig that we created. We've got it tied up. You can see my nice little big blue light. And yes, it was cold, man. I've got dry gloves on. Air temp was like 22 degrees. There we go. So that's what it looks like at the end of the dive. Cool features, by the way. The Apple iWatch and the Garmin will both mark your exit location for you. Um, they will tell you where your entrance location was and your exit location was. Now, DSX has GPS. I'm just going to say it like I mean it. It sucks. Don't even think about the GPS on it. Now, a cool feature of the DSX is you don't have to carry an auction sensor with you anymore, a nitrox sensor, because it has have a nitrogen nitrox sensor that you can use as well. Um, one of the cool features I do really, really, really love about the Shearwater is the replaceable batteries. They are simple. Any location in the world, you can grab you a double A and slap a new one in there. Whereas if my uh, Garmin or my Apex or uh, Sunto or even the iWatch all die, then I am just SOL. Now the good news is the Sunto has a crazy long battery life. It's like 36 hours of battery life. So does the uh, uh, DSX, uh, the Apex DSX has another crazy long battery life. Super charge, uh, fast charging as well. You, um, it has induction charging as well as it also has a cable for it. Um, the the uh, Garmin, again, super fast charging and uh, it lasts about four or five days. Um, I've, I've gotten three full days of diving of three days out of it with big dives, hour and a half dives out of it uh, and not had a problem and then still got all the water, went to the restaurant with my wife and got something as well. So great computers, battery life is really not an issue as long as you do a couple of basic things. You should be able to get at least two to three days out of diving on any one of these computers. Maybe not the iWatch. Um, I don't know on the battery life on that one. I've heard it's decent. I don't know. Um, but it was a good computer. Again, Benjamin Hatfield, teach me to dive. If you like this content, share it with your mother, brother, friend, aunt, friends, and, and uncle as well. Hit that subscribe button for more.